put no effort on the stand compared to songs for Aunt My Christmas, just you know, non traditional kind of thing that they're used to that they've heard before.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Gabriel on this first Sunday of Advent. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, as you and I begin our Advent journey, we'd like to make a special welcome of a part of our community. Our friends from uh, the Congolese community have chosen to join us. Uh, they are here in different parts of the church. And they gather for Mass as a community and as a family to remember the blessings that God has showered upon them and that he continues to show forth through them. So we certainly enjoy having you here and are glad that you've chosen St. Gabriel to be a part of your worship life. We also begin this Advent season by the um, eternal memorial of lighting the Advent candle. And so now we ask that as we begin this season and we light our candle, we turn our hearts towards this moment of prayer. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessing upon us as we light the candles of our wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ who is Lord and God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, 
that we were mindful of you in your ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you, await, as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm in the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord.
grant us your salvation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. I've been doing a little reading of late, uh, always trying to find something good to read and uh, uh, trying to get better at writing. I write a lot. Uh, I always like to get better at it. And uh, consequently, lately, I've been reading some stuff about how to fine hone that craft a little bit better. And I came across a book that I really, that really kind of spoke to me. And it, and it absolutely nailed what Jesus is trying to say here in this particular passage from Mark. This is our first time with Mark in a long time. Uh, this is the first Sunday of Advent. You know, it's a new year. Purple is here. The anticipation time begins. And I was reading in this book, uh, it was trying to tell you uh, all sorts of little th stuff. The author was kind of a little bit out there, I thought, but he had some good points. And it, Damon Swade was his name, uh, and he talked about the reason for success in anything. He's talking about the craft of writing, but it really makes sense in anything, he said. The reason for success or failure in this life, in anything that anybody undertakes. And okay, he got my attention with that. And he said, it's about paying attention. That's it. That's all it is. I was struck by that. You know, we all kind of look for that secret sauce, that secret to life, and uh, that's a pretty good candidate for being true. Those who succeed in life do so because they pay attention, and those who don't, don't. I was struck by that. Jesus would say the same thing. We heard that here. Watch. Stay awake. You don't know. That's what you need to do. You need to pay attention in life to what goes on around you. It's not just about getting yourself into your little silo and going about your day and doing what you do and being in routine and all that stuff like that. He says that's the way to missing the point. I, I was probably agreed with that. I thought it's very important. I've always been one to believe that change and growth and getting better is exactly what we're put here on the earth for. We heard the parable of the talents just a few weeks ago. It's the same thing. How dare we sit back and do nothing? Or just continue on like everything's the same. Here's a news flash for all of us that shouldn't be a news flash. It ain't ever the same. It's constantly changing. And we have to find a way to notice those movements as they happen. And to learn to work through them. It's just like this 2020. My goodness. Who could have ever predicted this one? Nobody did. There's no Nostradamuses around anymore, and even if there are, they're all liars because none of them have ever figured this one out. This year has been an amazing moment of change. You have been forced to pay attention to what's going on, like it or not. Yes, I think we can all agree that a new year is a good year. We get the liturgical year new today, and the calendar year in just about 30 days. Uh, we're all ready for a new start, new beginnings. But how we face that... Yeah, that matters, doesn't it? How we, you know, new beginnings are dropped in our lap all the time, if we, if we pay attention, of course. 
But how we respond to that is entirely up to us, isn't it? And I got to thinking, what, you know, there's got to be a right way and a wrong way to deal with life and changes. I mean, it's, it's a broad field, don't get me wrong. Uh, how we respond to the pandemic, for instance, has an enormous variety of diversity. Everybody's doing something that they believe is right. And they vary, you know, from the extreme deniers to the extreme isolators. It doesn't really matter. Everybody has to do what they think is right. But you know, it's not quite that simple, is it? There's got to be something a little bit more to it than that. And I think I figured out what that is. I'm a huge fan. You all know I love music. Uh, I've preached on it from time to time. And if you asked me what one of my favorite albums of all time was, I would have to say, and there are many, but uh, it's kind of like scripture. I have lots of favorites. But one that I really stands out for me, 1989, Don Henley, The End of the Innocents. Uh, it was written by Henley, who, uh, as you may know, was the drummer and uh, lead singer for much of the Eagles uh, through the 70s and until they broke up in the early 80s. Actually, he said they, they never broke up. They just took a 14-year-old year, year break there before they got back together. They're still touring now, even though Glenn Fry passed away. His son, Deacon, takes his place. I like that name, by the way. Of course you would. Of course I would, of course. But uh, Henley is a master lyricist. He's one of the greatest songwriters ever placed on the planet. His talent is amazing. And he's had many solo albums, but 89 was, was the watershed. I bought the cassette twice and the CD twice and burned them all up because I would listen to them over and over and over and over again. It would, I mean, there were like six songs released off there that most people knew, but I liked everything. They were fantastic. But the best one was the title track, The End of the Innocence. Uh, and it was Henley, as usual, commenting on the world around him at the change that was going on at that time. That's the year the Berlin Wall fell. Uh, and it was a time of great change and great uncertainty. And nobody knew how to deal with what was going on. Henley was famous for using a particular themes in many of his songs. Hotel California, he wrote that one, is about the journey from innocence to experience. A lot of people have asked him what his songs mean. Almost always he's responding with something like that. And the end of the innocence is kind of like the second part to that. It's like you not only is there innocence that changes to experience, but you've got to let go of the innocence. It doesn't serve you well. It's actually not very good for you. We should know better. We are put on this life in this world to grow to get better, to change, to become more. And if we attempt to hold on to certain things from our past, the way things always were, we do ourselves a disservice. And that's what the song was about. And I listen to it constantly. It's always on my playlists. And I happened to hear it this week again, and I realized, ah, that's the piece I was looking for. And there's a line that comes later on that's fantastic as all of his lines really were, that reminds us exactly of the point. He says, who knows how long this will last, how we've come so far, so fast. But somewhere back there in the dust, that same small town in each of us. Henley was from a small town in uh, Texas, Cass County. Uh, it was so small it didn't even have a name. It was a county. Uh, I know I need to remember this. So baby, give me just one kiss. Let us take a long last look before we say goodbye. Yeah, that's kind of something we need to remember, isn't it? Change happens. The old year is gone, the new year is here. We leave behind certain things. And we're supposed to leave behind certain things. That's the key. We cannot hold on to that baggage forever. Yes, it kind of drags along with us. We can't get rid of it and we makes us who we are but innocence ultimately has to end and for Henley that is a good thing it's a necessary thing and I think that's for us as well Jesus Christ would say the very same thing we're here to grow up I have a friend who always says well I refuse to grow up I may have to grow old but I refuse to grow up he thinks of that as some sort of a virtue and I told him I said you know you missed the point dude it's just not about that. I don't see any virtue in that. Uh, I think he's backed off saying that. Uh, 
don't think it's all that clever personally. It's about being what God wants us to be. Because God has said, you know, you don't know when he's coming. And don't, don't be asleep. We've got to pay attention. And that's something that maturity brings to us, doesn't it? We have to, instead of sliding back to the way things were, or the way we wish they th- things were, we have to grow up and stand up and say, yep, yeah, we've got to deal with this one, whatever it is. That's the new beginnings. You know, the church is very wise. Christ left us some marvelous sacraments. Starting over is built into our Catholic DNA. Over and over and over again. Our liturgical year is set up that way. Our sacraments are set up that way. Every time we go into the reconciliation room or we receive at the altar, it's new beginnings. It's change. It's going outside our comfort zone and stretching ourselves. Innocence cannot stay. It must end. And that is not something to be mourned. That's something to be celebrated. Jesus Christ gives us new opportunities every single day. Every single day that we breathe is a new day. The sun rises and the sun sets. The sun also rises. That's Hemingway, by the way. Pretty wise, actually. That's what we're all about. As Christians, we don't get to sit back. We don't get to say, well, I wish this stuff was over. Well, yeah, it's going to be over, but it's not going to be the same. No. Innocence is over. And I think that's a good thing. Because we have opportunities now. With our eyes wide open and plugged in and paying attention to everything that goes on around us. Knowing that we have the opportunity today to be better. To make the world better. To change things around us for the better. And work oh so hard to bring about that kingdom that shining city on the hill, that place where Jesus Christ reigns. Let us together stand and proclaim our Nicene Creed and our common faith as we offer, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we begin our Advent journey, we place trust in God's love for us and his ability to rescue us. Now let us present him with our needs and the needs of our entire world. As we be for the church. May the Lord look graciously upon us as we proclaim the gospel message in both word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may Christ strengthen their understanding of servant leadership for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all those who face hunger or malnutrition. May God grant them strength and through us provide the means for them to obtain their daily bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our family members and loved ones who struggle with mental illness, family strife, or addictive behaviors. May God bring them healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, St. Gabriel Parish, and all those needs expressed in our parish book of prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, especially our loved ones. May Jesus Christ himself welcome them into the eternal banquet of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, Heavenly Father, our guiding star, hear these our prayers spoken and unspoken, and grant them, as you grant us answers, in accordance with your holy will and in your time. We ask this as we have always asked, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord our God, these offerings that we make, gathered from among your many gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. <clears throat> Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare now to pray together our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace. May God's peace be with you. We'd like to offer a special greeting of peace to all of those who are joining us today on our YouTube channel, as well as our Facebook live stream.
those who are at home and those who are far from us, we offer you this uh, special extension of our peace and our love for you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we participate, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Once again, a warm welcome to our friends in the Congolese community, our uh, friends in faith uh, who are here with us today. We are happy to have you and are uh, greatly honored that you've chosen St. Gabriel uh, to worship with today and in the days to come. We are glad to welcome you always. Just want to invite everyone to consider, uh, if you can, during the season of Advent, the four weeks we're going to offer each Wednesday evening a Mass at 6.30 p.m. This is one of our ways that we pursue a strategic uh, plan initiative, which was to get more people the opportunity to come to liturgy by introducing different days or times or even prayer formats uh, to do that by. So during the four Wednesdays of Advent at 6.30, we'll have Mass. 
And there will also be an opportunity to stream it live on Facebook. And what we will do is gauge this Mass as we go through and once the new year comes to see if it, uh, as a weeknight or the time slot, are appropriate for us and the larger community and if it's something we'd like to add to the permanent calendar. Many of our uh, prayer supports that we have normally used during Advent that are in paper form, we have for you this year. Uh, journals, prayer books, the little blue Advent prayer books. Uh, all of these things are located in or near a kiosk that's on the sidewalk leading to the parish and school office. Uh, there are ideas and activities for adults and families with children. Uh, you, can, you are encouraged to take a few minutes to browse that area and take whatever you need to pray with or what you think might help you or neighbors or friends. Also, every week during Advent, we'll post a video of an Advent craft activity for children demonstrated by one of our St. Gabriel families. These will be posted on Facebook and our website and our YouTube channel. And as a part of our communion reception rite, at the end of Mass, as the deacon and I process out, what we will ask you to do is to continue to space yourselves, keep your masks on, uh, but you will be able to receive communion as you go out the Hudson Lane side of the campus or the multi-purpose building side of the campus. Uh, keep proper distance between each other. And then once you do approach the minister to receive communion, place your hands in a bowl shape or a cup so that we might gently place the Blessed Sacrament in your hands without touching your hands with our own. As well, when you're ready to receive, step aside towards the door and then either raise or lower your mask and then receive the Blessed Sacrament. We're trying to indicate not only our respect for each other and, and safeguarding one another during the pandemic, but also keeping in our minds and our hearts how we receive this great gift from God. Uh, so just be mindful of those two things. The people around us and the God that is coming into our bodies as that great gift of salvation and peace. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, bow down for the blessing. May our God in his goodness bless you abundantly this day. And may he walk with you all these days of your life until you meet him face to face in the kingdom that is for being prepared for us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you.